All right, smashy, smashy time. Part two. These guys need another coat. All right, hang on. Howdy, howdy, y'all. This is Claire Lawrence, and we're going to do a second coat on these smash paintings. Now, I did a really, really thick uh, glitter background on these guys, and it's got a lot of chunky glitter, some fine glitter. Uh, but I thought it would be a good idea to give it a light sanding. I don't know if you can tell that it's kind of got a little bit of a matte finish to it. So I didn't go after it too much, but just enough to add a little bit of tooth to it to make sure the um, resin bonded with it really well. Uh, but also because I was being very gentle because of the glitter too. I didn't know what it would do. Um, but again, I'm using my go-to resin. This is Stone Coat Art Coat. And I've got a mixture of colors that I will put a photograph at the end of the video um, so you guys can pick and choose what colors you're interested in because I always change my mind um, at the beginning of videos as far as like, mm, maybe I'm not this color. Ooh, this color would look really good with it. So that's why I do it still at the end. All right. Now, don't worry about sanding your resin too much. It's actually a good thing if it's been sitting for a while and it's been, you know, let's say it's been a few days. Um, these scratches from sanding will help the other one bond. Think of it as fingers. So if you've got a completely smooth edge and a completely smooth edge, a lot of times things will peel off. But if you've got some little grooves in there, the liquid will go in there into the grooves and really bond well with it. Now it's a fluid substance, so it's gonna find all the crevices and stuff and they will disappear like magic. So not to worry about that. Now, if you have something else on top of your resin, say um, some metallics that stay on the surface, some of the met metallic powders and uh, paints will do that. Be mindful of that if you do sand over, over that because sometimes they will sand that stuff right off. So um, a fix for that is to very carefully sand around it. It's a little bit tedious, but it does the job. All right, so I'm putting just a pretty healthy top coat on here, a little bit healthier than I would normally, but that's because of the, uh, the chunky glitter. Maybe see if I can smooth out this surface so it doesn't seem as rough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin coat on my edges to make it look a little varnished. So I didn't do that before, and I usually do that. So it just helps give it a nice professional look to it. Okay, that's done. Get a fresh pair of glues. And then we get to paint with the cutters. I don't know if you've ever done this when you pull the gloves out of the box and they're packed in so tightly and you pull one glove out and 20 pop out. Uh, a lot of times on a fresh box, I'll at, go ahead and pull out those 20 or 30 or something like that and then separate them out and then stuck them back in the box. And that way they kind of come out pretty loose and a lot easier. All right, there's a little bit of an edge there. All right, that's happy now. All right, so I've got a mixture of some blues and some reds, a little bit of gold, a little bit of white. So I'm going to put a little white in here. It's the Stone Coat Base Tint, so that maybe a possibility of cells might happen. Now, I do have a little bit more of the base tint in here than I would normally. So hopefully that doesn't affect it too bad. But I'm hoping that the cells will open up and show the base underneath through it. That's the plan. All right. So I'm gonna continue with some reds in here because why not? This is a nice little combination of a couple colors. I will do that a lot where I'll mix them, mix in two together to kind of create your own little custom color. Cause it's fun and I can't help myself. This is a really pretty ruby metallic. Let's see, do I go with some blues or not? I think I might. Now I'm gonna hit this with a little gold and then put a blue there. Right. 
Oops. Put the painting on something on top of that. Just a little bit of white. Okay. Time for some magic. With this slipper. <laughs> I almost dropped that. Okay, now you want to push down, make good contact, enough that it comes out the size just a little bit, not a whole lot. See how it's running right there and right there a little bit? And give it a little wiggle. And then this is the hard part. Now you can either push it, pull it so it opens up like a book or go diagonal. And I did these last two smash paintings at a diagonal, so I want to continue that. All right, here we go. Ooh, okay. That might add some drama. Okay, I kind of like that. Like right off the bat. That's looking really pretty. All right, I'm gonna clean off my hands real quick. Now here I debate on whether or not to add some colors to it or leave it as is. And I'm not sure. I don't usually use this for a line bit, but I think I'm going to. This is the um, the purple combination. It's like a really nice violet color. I'm gonna run a couple lines with this guy. That's what I was hoping it would do is drag some of the colors. as is but this one I'm gonna see if I can move it this direction a little bit I'm trying not to interfere with those cells but they're moving kind of like peacock cells This one, I think. Oh. All right, let me hit that with a uh, torch real quick. Put them on the tray, and then I'll bring you in for a close-up. Drips look pretty. Check that out. All right, here we go. So here's that pour. Got a nice coverage, I think, on these uh, glitter, on this glitter background. So I don't think I'm going to have much texture. But look at that. That looks really interesting. 
right in there. That is like, I think my favorite spot right there. You never know what these things, what they're gonna look like. All right, guys, until tomorrow, we will have to wait and see how this thing turns out. Later. All right, here's the next day on this smash piece. Turned out rather interesting. A little bit of movement happened, but overall, I'm real pleased with the colors. Oh, I usually start right to left. Sorry about that. I kind of got off. A little bit because of having two of them love the blends in there let's see okay good focus thank you a little bit of cell action not as much as i was expecting well actually i should say i did expect a little bit of it because uh the white that i used for another project i wanted a milky white so that meant a little bit more stone coat base tint than i normally would have done and that has a tendency not to do the cell action as much when you put too much in there. But that was for the wispies of my dragon. I didn't want it to be a bright white. I wanted it to be a milky white so it would work with the background more. So, any rate, so this blended in a little bit more with the glitter in the background. Um, super happy with it. One of them just, just is a little bit of color on the one side and it comes out over overall but i think it connects the piece a little bit better so real happy with it i think all right guys hit that like button hit the subscribe button but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up later y'all